Welcome to this week's Movie Math as Frozen's success continues to, well, snowball. Its seventh week in release, the Disney animated flick recaptured the number one spot, something it hasn't held since week three. See, back in 2010, Tangled had to compete with the second to last Harry Potter film, Narnia's Voyage of the Dawn Treader, and Yogi Bear. And last year, Wreck It Ralph had to compete with the final Twilight film and Rise of the Guardians. But Frozen finds itself in a box office sweet spot, as Catching Fire did all its business early on, and Walking with Dinosaurs never materialized as a rival for family audiences. And on top of that, overall audiences largely rejected this year's crop of Christmas Day Oscar contenders, causing them to give Frozen a second look, or second viewing, or third or fourth. How many times have you seen Frozen? With a drop in the mere 20s, Frozen is currently the fourth most successful film of the year here in the U.S., and, as many of you were eager to see, popped into the top 10 worldwide as well, pushing the crudes off the list. Interestingly, when you adjust for inflation, Disney Animation used to enjoy this kind of success all the time. In fact, domestically, Frozen still lags behind Beauty and the Beast, Peter Pan, Aladdin, Lady and the Tramp, Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty, The Jungle Book, Fantasia, The Lion King, 101 Dalmatians, and Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. How do you think Walt could afford to build his animation empire in the first place? And I will say, while it's wonderful to see so many of you falling in love with Disney animation all over again, or for the first time, I've been very surprised at a lot of disrespect in the comment sections for the other Disney animated films that paved the way for Frozen. But even if mainstream audiences can manage to muster up some respect for the Disney legacy, expressing an actual interest in it seems to be too much to ask. Saving Mr. Banks dropped down to number seven this weekend for a domestic total of just under 60 million. Overseas, it's only opened in the UK, but there's been little interest in it, despite Mary Poppins originating there. In comparison, Frozen has made three times as much. It will indeed be interesting to see what becomes of the Disney company as it absorbs multiple brands and embraces computer animation. But it's worth pointing out that despite all these acquisitions and changes, it still came in second to Warner Brothers at the global box office for the year. Warner Brothers took in a little over $5 billion thanks to Man of Steel, Gravity, and the resurgence of its Tolkien franchise. The Great Gatsby, The Conjuring, and Were the Millers were also impressive moneymakers. Disney took in about a quarter less than $5 billion, even though they had two Marvel movies, one the most successful film of the year, and entries from both Pixar and Disney Animation. Universal came in third with $3.6 billion thanks to Despicable Me 2 and Fast 6, as well as Identity Thief, Mama, and The Purge. While well, Fox came in fourth with $3.4 billion thanks to The Croods, The Wolverine, A Good Day to Die Hard, and The Heat. Yeah, they're not letting Marvel go anytime soon. Sony faltered this year with After Earth and White House down, resulting in a worldwide total of $3 billion for fifth place. Meanwhile, Lionsgate was able to beat out Paramount for the second year in a row for the sixth spot, thanks to The Hunger Games as well as Now You See Me, which did some box office magic of its own. As for Paramount, even with World War Z, Star Trek Into Darkness, and G.I. Joe Retaliation, they still ended up in last place. And to think, only two years ago, in 2011, they were the studio to pull in $5 billion worldwide, the first to do so, thanks to their Transformers franchise, plus distribution deals with Marvel and DreamWorks Animation. Only one of those things is still at the studio. As for the rest of the top 10, Paranormal Activity failed to go bump at the box office, as it opened in second place with just $18 million. That's the lowest wide opening for the franchise yet, by far. January has been good to horror, and Paramount, stumbling out of the gate for 2014, will have to take a serious look as to why they couldn't get Latino audiences to turn out for a flick tailor-made for them. Perhaps they were trying too hard? All the controversy for The Wolf of Wall Street seems to have helped it a little at the box office as it continues to run neck and neck with American Hustle. Perhaps now that the holidays are over, audiences are more willing to perv it up, which underlines that Wolf probably would have performed much better with its original October release date. As for the desolation of Smaug and Anchorman 2, they lost some of their holiday shine after spending Christmas at the top of the box office, both dropping near 50% in their fourth and third weekends respectively. Finally, 47 Ronin also dropped around 50%, allowing Grudge Match to jump into the top 10 after debuting at number 11 last weekend. And all these movies have one more week to grab as much money as they can, since Kellen Lutz's turn as Hercules is expected to go largely unnoticed.
After that, four new movies will hit theaters for the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend. And that's this weekend's box office. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope we'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.